Hello everyone! Alright, we're going to do together everything on the example 2.1.7. We have a function f of x and it's defined by its graph below. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to compute outputs at minus 3, 0, 2, 4, and 5. So the outputs are going to be in this column right here. Okay, so these are going to be my my outputs. And then we're going to compute the left limits. So this is my column where I'm going to have my left limits. And then we're going to compute the right limits. And this will be my, my column with uh, the right limits. And then of course, as soon as we have the left and the right limit, we will compute the two side limits. So this is of course, something that we do directly simply by comparing left, right, and uh, etc. So um, so let's compute outputs first. Actually, before computing outputs, I like to, uh, if there's any vertical or horizontal asymptote, I like to put them right away, and this will help us um, compute uh, some of those limits. Again, here I say compute, there's no computation. Okay, we're just looking at the graph. Okay, so. It's a bit simpler. So here we go. So the first vertical asymptote that I see is right here at boom, at zero. So here at zero, at x equals zero, there's a vertical asymptote. So I like to put them. So I like to, here I'm just using a marker, a red marker for my vertical asymptote and the equation is poof, x equal to zero. So that's my first a vertical asymptote. There's another one. So there's another one here at boom, at x equal two. So there's one at x equal two. Um, so I like to write the equation here. Poof, x equal two. So I have my two and there is no other vertical asymptote. What about horizontal asymptote? So behaviors going to infinity. So I see one at infinity, poof, at e at y equal four. So I'm going to write its equation here. So copy, so poof, whoops. Um, so here we go, poof. Oh yeah, that makes 60 sounds here. So y equal one, not equal one, that's equal four. So y equal four, okay. Uh, oh my God, why am I having so much trouble? So y equal four, here we go. Okay, and I have uh, another one at minus infinity. So poof, another one at minus infinity. Uh, when my function, when the axis gets very large negatively, it's getting closer to y equal uh, minus one. So two horizontal asymptote, one at y equal four and the other one at y equal minus one. So now let's compute some outputs for real. All right, at minus three, my function is following that big dot here. Um, it's on that big dot, so the height of that big dot is minus two. <laughs> At zero, you can see here on the vertical asymptote, there's no output. So at zero, that function is undefined. Zero is not part of the domain. At two, the function is on that y, on the full dot here, the height of that dot is three. So at two, the function is equal to three. At four, there's a white dot and a, so a hollow dot and a black dot, a full dot. So of course we are going to use a full dot here and the height of that full dot is one. So the output at four is just one. And at five, my function is on the graph right here. The height of the graph at that point at x equal five is three. So that's simple evaluation. Uh, forgot to mention that at minus three, there's also a whole dot. Of course, we're not using it to, um, uh, to compute the output here. So we use the full the full dot, okay, to um, compute the output. Now let's do the left and the right limit. And may as well just do left, right, and both. This is like the best way, at least to me, to do it. So here, if we are 
around minus three. If we are approaching minus three from the left, so doot, doot, doot. So you're approaching minus three from the left. What are you getting closer to? You're getting closer to the actual full dot and the height of that full dot is two. So the left limit is equal to two. Meanwhile, on the right, if you're sneaking on up on uh, minus three on the right, so doot, 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 you're getting closer to what? You're getting closer to the white dot. And the white dot, its height is actually equal to zero for the two side limit because the left limit is two and the right limit is zero. And because they're different, automatically the two side limit does not exist. Okay, that's for the two side limit. Uh, now next for zero. So for the left limit, so we're on the graph approaching zero from the left side. So do, do, do special effect on this video. So you're going up in the sky okay, to reach and play with the angel. So this is going up forever. So the left limit is going to be infinity. So this is infinity. And of course, we're getting closer to that vertical asymptote. We're expecting infinity or minus infinity. It's plus because it's going up. On the right side here, do, 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 you're going up forever. So if you're going up forever again on the right side, you're going to get again plus infinity. And because the right limits, the left limit and the right limit are both infinities, the two side limit is infinity again. So next point of interest is two. So two, if you're approaching two from the right, the left side, you're going to get one, two, three. So you're going to go down, okay, in hell. So you're going down forever next to the vertical asymptote. So the left limit of two is minus infinity. But on the right side, if you're approaching two from the right side, two, two, so you're going to approach the full dot and the height of the full dot is three. So the right limit is three. And because the left limit is minus infinity, but the right limit is three and they're not the same, the two sided limit does not exist. Next up, my, the, the point four. So if you're pushing four from the left, so, so here from the left, you're pushing the, the white dot. So the left limit is equal to two and the right limit again do, do, do. approaching the white dot again Woo -hoo. two and because these two numbers left limit and right limit are the same the two side limit is two again and then what about five so here two two oops i'll go again two 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 and two I'll do both because everything is going to that full dot here at height three. So you get three, three, and three. So left limit is three, right limit is three. So the two side limit is three. A quick remark here about these limits computed for us. Uh, we can see that the only place where everything is equal, okay, is at x equal five. And you can see that only at five, I can draw my graph without lifting my pen. Okay, so at four, I need, I need to lift it. At two, I need, to I need to lift it. There's a vertical asymptote. At zero, I need to lift it. There's another vertical asymptote. At minus three, I need to lift it. There's two, gra there's two branches of the graph that are disconnected. So again, here's, this is building our intuition for chapter, chapter three stuff. And actually, just here as a remark, I'll do it in red. Um, the domain of this function. So there's outputs here everywhere except at zero. So the domain of this function is everything but zero. Uh, what about the continuous domain of that function? Where is it continuous? Well, I can draw the graph of this function. Okay, I'll use yellow here. I can draw the graph of this function. Oh, wait. Ooh. I can draw the graph of this function. Uh, let me just get my marker here. Here you go. So I can draw my graph here from minus infinity all the way up to minus three, but at minus three, I need to lift my pen. Then there's another branch that goes to infinity. At zero, I need to lift my pen again. So zero is it's not continuous at zero. Then at two, I need to lift my pen. So it's not continuous at two. At four, it's not continuous. I need to lift my pen and then it's continuous 
to infinity. So the continuous domain here, if I'm using interval notation, from minus infinity to three, sorry, minus three, union minus three to zero, union zero to two, union, there's a lot of pieces here, two to four, and then union four to infinity. So that's for the continuous domain, okay? So um, again, normally when we give you a graph, we ask you for all these things, okay? So domain, continuous domain, evaluation, left, right, and two-sided limits. All right, the only thing we haven't done is computing limits at the infinite. So let's do uh, first, boom, the one at minus infinity. So the one at minus infinity, so my function is getting closer to this vertical asymptote, y equal minus one. So this means that the value as x goes to minus, inf in minus infinity is minus one. And then what about the last one going to infinity? So here we go, boom. Okay, so the limit as x approaches infinity uh, for my function is going to be equal to, uh, so it's getting closer to my horizontal asymptote at four, so it's going to be equal to four. And that's it, that's all the limits for, uh, that we can do on this graph. So this is like a complete question, we've done absolutely everything. Before finishing the section 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3, I want you guys to go on page five and add up a new example. Okay, we're going to do a new example. So I just want you to draw the square root of x function, the one that we know very well. And uh, I just want us to compute the two-side limit around zero of the square root of x function. And this exercise is just to illustrate the difference between uh, undefined and does not exist in limit computation. So first, if you want to compute a two-side limit of a of, of the function uh, of the square root function around zero, uh, you need to compute the left one and the right one first. So I already have a graph here for you and all the limits. So if we try to compute the left limit, what's going to happen? So if you're trying to approach zero from the left, the problem is that these points are on the dead part. So this is like the dead zone. The function is undefined on the left side. If you pick any values of x less than zero, strictly less than zero, then of course you're going to get um, square roots of negative numbers and those numbers are undefined. So here the left limit is undefined because so it, it does not exist. So U and D does mean does not exist, but U and D and E, U and D means does not exist. But when you write U and D, it's because you're explaining how it fails to exist. It does not exist because the function is undefined. So it's a more precise answer. Okay. So what about the right side? So you have, if you are approaching zero from the right side, so dude, 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 you're approaching the value of the function, which is zero, so you're just going to get zero. And then of course, when you compare left and right, because they're not the same, so it's not undefined, because they're not the same, the two side limit does not exist. And that's it for section 2.1, 2.2.3. So left side limit, two, right side limit, two side limits, limits going to infinity, distinction between U and D and zero. That's it. Bye-bye,